Today, I'm gonna to take you back to one of my favorite like 4-H and pony club exercises. And we're gonna go over the basic um, external parts of the horse. I'm also gonna tell you a little bit about some anatomy. And then we've got a lot more exciting stuff coming up on anatomy later on, but I'll explain more on that later. So I am here with Noel, and if you are new here to the channel and the website, I'm Callie. This is CRK Training, and this is the weekly video show. So every week I do a video on a riding tip, a training idea, or horse care advice. And today we're just doing something fun, and we're going to go through and talk about the different parts of the horse. So if you are experienced with horses, this might be a little refresher. If you're new to horses, this is gonna give you more of the terminology that you're probably hearing as you're around the barn or as you're at your lessons. And it's gonna help you better understand what people are talking about when they refer to different parts of the horse. So we're gonna just start up here at Noel's best end. So if we look at um, Noel's head and neck, We've got the pole, which is the area up here in between her ears. Of course, we have her mane, but this part of the hair that hangs in front is called the forelock. A joint that is um, really important for horses because it actually has a lot of nerve endings and it plays a big role in their proprioception is the tempomandibular joint. So that's often referred to as TMJ and that's gonna be right here. And this is where the lower jaw meets the upper jaw. Part of what makes it important is also because of how horses chew. So when horses chew their feed, they chew in this kind of a motion instead of chopping up and down. So this joint gets a lot of activity. Um, as we move down the horse, interesting thing about how the cervical vertebra or the neck vertebra lay in the horse, a lot of people just picture them running straight down or along the top, but actually the cervical vertebra run down through here and then come in you know, behind the shoulder area. So the top of the horse's neck is called their crest. And then we come back here to the shoulder. So the horse has a scapula, just like we do, a shoulder blade, and that lays right in here. And of course, they've got a lot of heavy muscling in this area. And then if we come down a little further, the horse's elbow is right in here. So the, um, your elbow, corresponds to the horse's elbow. Radius and ana in um, human anatomy, you know, we've got the two bones in our forearm. In the horse, they're fused. So going down the front leg, we have the horse's knee, we have the cannon, we have the fetlock joint, we have the pastern, and then we have the coronet or the coronary band. So this is basically where the um, hoof begins. And this is actually where the hoof grows out of. And then of course we have the horse's hoof. So next we've got the withers. The withers are actually like what we feel here is the top of the um, dorsal processes of the horse's, um, part of the horse's thoracic spine. So we've got the withers. And then as we come back, we've got the loins. And then we have the horse's croup. Their rib cage is often referred to as the barrel. And this area right in here, where our girth is going to lay, is the girth groove. Now, if I move back a little bit further, this is the flank of the horse. So we when we refer to the flank, it's this area. Um, Noel's pelvis, you can kind of picture the pelvis um, sitting in here in her hindquarters. Horses obviously have a very big pelvis and a lot of heavy muscle attachments around here. So this is the point of the hip. And on the back here, where her, the back of the pelvis would be, is the point of the buttock. And then the horse, the horse's tail, the top of this tail is referred to as the dock. And if I go further down, this is the stifle joint. Um, a fun little fact is the stifle is actually equivalent to our knee. Um, and horses have a patella, just like we have a patella or a kneecap. This is the gaskin, this muscled area here. And then we have the hock. We have the rear cannon. And again, the fetlock, the pastern, coronet, and the hoof. 
If you enjoyed this short tutorial on horse anatomy and horse body parts, I think you're really gonna enjoy what we have coming up. So I actually have always been really fascinated with anatomy. A, um, a fun fact about my childhood that a lot of people don't know is one of the projects that I did that I put a ton of time into and that I really enjoyed was developing a horse skeletal collection. So I really love learning about anatomy and I think that it really helps us as riders because when we can picture what's going on inside the horse, we can really understand how important posture and how important good training and good movement and just the way that we balance and use ourselves as riders is so important to the horse. And one of my mentors and teachers, Wendy Murdoch, is an exceptional at anatomy. She's studied it, she's a Feldenkrais practitioner, so she really understands how anatomy relates to movement. And we have a course with Wendy called The Effortless Rider. So it's more than just anatomy, it's also the biomechanics of riding and how all those pieces fit together. But that course is going to be running very soon. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, I think you'd really like to get involved with that. So we're gonna have some free training coming out so you can see what it's all about. We'll throw a link down below where you can learn more. And I would also love to hear your comments about this video. And if there was a term that was new to you, or if you have a question about horse anatomy. So go ahead and put your comments down below. If you're watching this anywhere besides my website, crktrainingblog.com, that's where the best conversation happens. That's where I'll be able to see your questions. And I really look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.